Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter, everyone. I come to you from the shining shores of Lake Bernard here at Zion United Church here in Sundridge, Ontario. I'm the Reverend Sandra Jenkinson, and joining me here is my husband, Reverend Fraser Williamson, who ministers at St. Paul's and St. Andrew's United Churches in Golden Valley and Port Loring. And we'll be leading uh, our services together, worship services uh, together, until we're able to gather in person together for worship. And we'll also be changing up our, our locations so we'll move the studio from Main Street on Sundridge uh, to Main Street in uh, Golden Valley. <laughs> and we'll be recording at St. Paul's next week. And now to move over to the candle that was extinguished on Friday. We are self-isolating this Easter morning celebrating our faith that God raised Jesus from death to life. That was Jesus' promise to us. Hallelujah! Thanks be to God! And now, our call to worship. Come and celebrate the good news. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb is empty. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. And now we will sing our first hymn, an old favorite, number 155 in Voices United. Or it is on the song sheet that, I, that we have emailed to everybody uh, with the lyrics there. And it's Jesus Christ is risen today. Thank you. 
us pray. This past week, fear and hatred had done their very worst. Despair had its day. Sorrow and sadness were in the air. A gloom would not go away. But early on the first day of the week, Mary saw the Lord, and now we all can say, Jesus is alive. The unending, unquenchable power of God's love has brought him back. Hallelujah. Amen. God has opened to us the gates of righteousness that we may enter through them. Confident in God's love, let us confess our sin. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been raised from the waters of baptism to share in your glorious resurrection. Yet we have not lived as Easter people. We are unsure of your promise, confused about your will, and afraid in the face of danger. Like Mary, we weep at the tomb, but do not recognize your presence. Call us by name, risen Lord, that we may know you with confidence. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us, give us encouragement and confess your Easter victory. Whenever we are distracted by petty conflicts, keep our minds on your reconciling love. Whenever we are overwhelmed by power of evil, reveal again to us your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Forgive us our sin and let our lives be a testimony to your salvation through the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, church. God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. It's gone again. Let us pray. Gracious God, open us to receive anew the bounty of your word. Bless our senses so we too may say like the disciples of old, we have experienced Jesus. We know the risen Christ. Amen. And our gospel is from the gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord was descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. I know that you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. As he said, come see the place where he lay, then quickly go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took a hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. what Mary Magdalene and the other Mary talked about that morning as they walked to Jesus's tomb. Did they talk about 
the good times they shared with Jesus and the miracles they had witnessed during his ministry? Did they talk about the horrors they witnessed as they stood near the foot of the cross and heard him cry out to God just before he died? Did they wonder what would become of them all? And the other, them and the other disciples, now that Jesus was gone? Or did they remain somber and silent, letting tears run unchecked down their cheeks? We don't know. The writer of Matthew only tells us they went to see the tomb as the first day of the week was dawning. Unlike the other Gospels, which tell us Mary, either by herself or with other women, were bringing spices to anoint Jesus' body, the two Marys in the Gospel of Matthew are just coming to see the tomb. I wonder if, unlike the other disciples, they actually heard and believed what Jesus told them when he was with them. Because three times in Matthew's gospel, Jesus tells his followers that he will suffer and die and then be raised. I wonder if all the other disciples got stuck on the first part of what Jesus had told them the suffering and the dying, and didn't hear or ignored or forgot about or just couldn't quite believe the last and best part of Jesus' words. After all, the disciples were human just as we are human. And it's easy to get stuck in places of suffering and torment and think that it will never end. We all have our Good Friday moments. When we suffer physical or mental or emotional anguish that seems to have no end. When there seems to be no end in sight of a difficult situation. For some folks, the effects of this pandemic on our daily lives and all aspects of our health, physical and mental, and social and spiritual, may place us occasionally or even regularly in Good Friday moments when we are physically and socially isolated. Those shadowy moments when we think we are going to be stuck forever and we despair that life will ever return to normal. I wonder if that morning after the Sabbath, in the early dawn, Mary and the other Mary remembered Jesus' words about being raised again and came to the tomb in faith, only to be disappointed that it was still closed up. The stone remained in place. But then, then a, there was a great earthquake, and an angel of the Lord descended and rolled the stone away, revealing a tomb that was empty, revealing a Lord who had already been raised, just as Jesus had said. Suddenly, everything changed. Despair and sadness were replaced with fear and great joy, the writer tells us. Death was replaced with life. Hopelessness was replaced with purpose. God's gift to the world, given and shown through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection, reveals God's power to transform the life-draining powers of the world into a love, capital L, that gives life to all creation. Suddenly, that first Easter morning, instead of wondering what they were going to do next, God's angel gives the two Marys a message and a mission. 
to share the good news of resurrection, to share the good news that Jesus is risen, to share the good news that Jesus is waiting to meet them. This is exactly the same good news that we celebrate today when we cry hallelujah. We celebrate resurrection. We celebrate that Christ is risen. And we celebrate that Jesus meets us, whoever and wherever we are in life, with unconditional love and abundant grace. Christ lifts us up out of our Good Friday moments into Easter glory, with its joy and life and the transformative power of God's love. And no one is excluded from this precious love. When the Marys encounter Jesus on their way to tell the disciples of his rising, he tells them to send the disciples to Galilee. Now in Jesus' time, this was known as Galilee of the Gentiles, a town filled with Jews and Gentiles alike. And with this small detail, the writer of Matthew highlights that the good news is for more than just the children of Israel. The good news is for all of God's people. The gospel the Marys proclaim that first Easter morning is the same gospel the world needs so badly to hear and experience today. We too are commissioned and sent out as Christians to share the good news of resurrection and new life and the transforming power of God's love. We are tasked to participate in God's mission of lifting the world and its peoples out of Good Friday and into Easter's new beginning. And if that seems too much to do or too overwhelming a task, then I want you to remember that God doesn't ask us to do it alone. For we are the church, connected and inspired by the Holy Spirit that Christ sent to be with us. And as the church, we worship and we celebrate, we seek justice and reconciliation, and we proclaim the love of Christ in our words and actions. We show the same faith in Jesus' promises as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary did when they went to the tomb that morning after the Sabbath, trusting that he had indeed been raised. And we show that same faith in Jesus each time we share in God's mission through outreach, through care and compassion. We show that same faith each time we work for justice, we show that same faith whenever we shelter those who are vulnerable or at risk. Every time we share the good news through action or word, we proclaim our faith in the transforming power of God's love shown that first Easter morning. And even though this year we are scattered in our own home, we as the church are still commissioned to go forth proclaiming the good news of Easter. We are still commissioned to go forth in joy, to meet Jesus and worship him. We are still sent to participate in God's mission to God's people, sharing the love of Christ and the joy of the Holy Spirit in our words and actions. So I wonder, how can we do that this year from our homes? What new opportunities to share the good news of Easter can we discover in our current situation? I'm not going to provide an answer for that question for you or for those questions. I leave those questions with you. But as we wonder together, even though we are apart, May the Spirit help us to proclaim to all this Easter the good news that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Thanks be to God. Amen and hallelujah.
Do you want me to do the uh, invitation to the next hymn? Or not? Um, or, you do or yeah, you can, since you, but I'll come up here for it. So. Okay. I'm ready to turn it back on? <laughs> Okay. Our next hymn is another 